Happy Friday! It's Miss Shannon, and today I'm going to read Chapter 3 of Big Nate in a class by himself. Chapter 3 Yes, that's it. I'll skip school. I'll take the day off. I'll pretend somebody just invented a new holiday. I'll... I'll... I'll stop right here. What am I doing? Nobody gets away with skipping school at P.S. 38. It's impossible. Why? Two words. The machine. Not a real machine, like the funky looking thing the janitor uses to buff up the floors. The machine isn't something you can see or touch, but it's there. The machine watches you. It knows your every move. And if you're not where you're supposed to be, the machine tracks you down. Here's how. One, the seating chart. Teachers always tell you where to sit. They claim it helps them remember kids' names, right? Like they care what our names are. They really do it to keep tabs on you. One look at the chart and they know right away that you're not at your desk. Then the machine starts up. Number two, the attendance sheet. Teachers write everything down. Who knows why? They fill out an attendance sheet in every class. If you're missing, a big red X goes right next to your name. Congratulations, you're absent. We're organized. You're control freaks. Number three, the class helper. We saw a movie about bees and science. This big fat queen bee sat around the hive doing nothing while the little drones did all the work. Sound familiar? Peel me a grape. Teachers are the queen bees. And guess who the drones are? I'm looking for a classroom helper to do a very important job. It's always a suck up like Gina who volunteers because she's so desperate to earn extra credit. Good for you, Gina. I'm sure your career as a sixth grade classroom helper will get you into some fancy pants college. Take this attendance sheet to the front office. The front office, the engine that runs the machine and right in the middle of it, the school secretary, number four. Mrs. Japolsky's not so bad. It isn't her fault they make her keep track of attendance. I also don't blame her for all the time she says, Nate, the principal will see you now. She's fast for an old lady. She looks up o all over all those attendance sheets in no time. The second she spots the red X next to your name, She's on the phone with your parents. Nate isn't at school. What? There. You see how the machine works? See how efficient it is? You can't win. There's no way to beat it. That's my predicament. If I run off to the woods and hang out with Spitzy, I'll take about five minutes for Mrs. Shapolsky to fire up the dad hotline. Then summer school would be the least of my problems. I'd probably get suspended or expelled, maybe shipped to some military academy where they slap a uniform on you, give you a buzz cut, and make you say, sir, at the end of every sentence. That settles it. Skipping school is out. I need to be a little more creative about this. What I need is an excused absence. An excused absence means you go to school just like normal, but you've got a parent note saying that you need to be somewhere else at a certain time. Bingo. You're free. Yesterday, Alan Alkwitz left halfway through science because he had to go get a wart zapped. How lucky can you get? So long, sucker. Smell you later. So all I need to do is stroll into social studies with a note from dad saying I've got an excuse. Let's say a dentist appointment. And I'm off the hook, genius. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're thinking. I don't have a note from dad, but I can take care of that. 
right, right, right. Dear Mrs. Godfrey, please excuse Nate from social studies at 8.45 this morning. He has a very important dentist appointment. Whoa, nope, that won't cut it. That looks too much like my handwriting. Mrs. Godfrey will sniff that out right away. She may be loud and nasty, but the woman's not stupid. I've got to make it look more like a grown-up's handwriting, like Dad's, and his is wicked messy. Whoops, not that messy. Even I can't read that. Oh, this is tougher than I thought it would be, and I'm running out of time. Dear Mrs. Godfrey, please excuse Nate from social studies at 8.45 this morning. He has a very important dentist appointment. Hey, hey, that looks like the real thing. Pretty convincing. Hello, excused absence. Goodbye, social studies test. All that's left to do is forge dad's signature. Forge dad's signature. Huh. Let me think for a sec. Forge, forgery. Yikes. Isn't forgery like a crime? Don't people get thrown in jail for signing the wrong name on a check or for using someone else's credit card? Listen, I'm no goody two-shoes. There's a desk in the detention room with my name on it, literally. But I'm not breaking the law. I don't want to get dragged out of PS38 in handcuffs. There goes the notorious Nate Wright, the identity thief, Yowza. This might not be such a great idea. Maybe I should just rip this thing up before somebody comes along and, hey, ah! Oh man, it's only Francis. That's the downside of living next door to your best friend. He's always sneaking up behind you and invading your privacy. Not that I have anything to hide. What are you writing? Nothing, nothing. Okay, so I've got one tiny little thing to hide. Nothing, he asks. Nothing, I shoot back. It doesn't look like nothing. Why is he acting all Sherlock Holmes on me? It looks like a letter. Okay, okay, I'll tell you. I was forging an excuse note to get out of the social studies test. Hmm, long, awkward pause. Francis has a weird expression on his face. One of those half-smiling, half-confused looks. He's either judging me for what I just told them, told him, or about to fart. What social studies test, he says. Francis can be such a moron. I've got to remind myself sometimes how smart he is. The test I saw you studying for this morning. I wasn't studying for a test. Then why were you reading your social studies textbook? <clears throat> because I enjoy improving my mind. I'm going to ignore the incredibly lame statement Francis just made and focus on what he said right before that. So there's no social studies test? There's definitely not a test. I should know because I write down everything she says. If we have a test, I would know exactly when I was reviewing blah, 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 blah. Yes, yes, yes. Actually, Francis says, his eyes getting all dreamy. I sort of wish we were having a test today. Mrs. Godfrey's essay questions are so invigorating. Sorry, Francis, but when you start acting like a major mayor of Geek City, it's my job to knock some sense into you. You're lucky I didn't nail you with a heavier book. Bring. There's the first bell. Not exactly music to my ears. But that sick feeling in the pit of my stomach is gone. No test, no summer school. This could end up being a half decent day after all. Yep, things are definitely looking up. That is the end of chapter three. Hope you guys enjoyed that. And I will be back with chapter four on Monday. Enjoy the weekend. Have a great night. Bye.